from Nigeria, fellows of the postgraduate, West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. I also recognize SIPAN coordinators and all of the noble colleagues here present tonight. Without, without wasting much of our time, I would like to introduce our presenter tonight, who is an erudite lecturer, Dr. Sunday Owofisaya. He is a holder of Doctor of Pharmacy PharmD, Doctor of Philosophy PhD. Dr. Sunday Owofisaya is a member Institute of Public Analyst of Nigeria. He is also a, mo a member of the Society of Test Laboratory An Analyst of Nigeria, Testing Laboratory An Analyst of Nigeria. He is also a member of CIPAN. Professor Sunday Owofisayo is a professor, associate professor of clinical pharmacy and biopharmacy at the University of, of Fuyu. He is a, a molecular biopharmacist, a clinical pharmacokinetist. He's a satisfied laboratory analyst and a licensed analyst of Nigeria. Dr. Sonny Owofisayo is a clinical, is a head of the department of the clinical pharmacy and biopharmacy, faculty of pharmacy. University of Fuyu. He is a principal investigator and bioscientific research group, faculty of pharmacy, University of Fuyu. He is a reviewer of many reputable scientific journals and, he, and has published in many uh, publications in peer reviewed journals. Noble colleagues, help me in welcoming our presenter tonight, Dr. Sunday Owofi Sayo. Sir, you can have the floor. Hello, sir. Our noble uh, presenter, you could please take the floor. You can unmute yourself, sir. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Am I audible? Yes, sir, we can uh, hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my amiable moderator, thank you for the introduction. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly observed. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be asked to give tonight's seminar. I want to be very quick and brief because I know we have actually, uh, you know, uh, dispensed with some time already. And so let me just get straight to the uh, the slide, and we can roll on. So uh, the preamble for tonight's uh, presentation says victories are not born in the field. You create them doing practice in and doing practice day in and day out. So the outline I have this evening are uh, stated on the, uh, the slide here. So by way of introduction, I'd like us to note that today's aging uh, population and increasing population puts pressure on demand for uh, pharmaceutical care and other health attention. And of course, the incidence of, of our chronic health uh, concerns and problems makes it uh, imperative for us to step up our game 
in terms of pharmaceutical care delivery. So all of this calls for an integrated approach to healthcare delivery. So there is the need for advances in patient-centered care. And thank God we are already poised and in the, uh, uh, in, in, in the move. We're already uh, putting things in place to ensure that nothing but the best comes from us, even to our clients and to our society. And so our focus is to improve patient, patient satisfaction and uh, to improve clinical management of uh, both acute and chronic uh, challenges that uh, we may be faced with. So for that to our introduction, I would like to make a contrast between the historical and traditional laboratory testings that we know of, comparing that with the point of care testing that we actually want to look at this evening. So point of care testing has been there. We are only trying to emphasize the fact that uh, putting it in place in advanced care delivery will help us to optimize uh, the, the, the services that we offer. And so the advantage of a reduction of waiting hours and days before the conventional laboratories, the, the, the centralized laboratories come up with a result so that we can actually annex that result into decision making. The issue of POCT, point of care testing, will erase, will minimize such waiting time that can be devastating if uh, it is not removed. And so by way of definition, what is point of care uh, testing? It encompasses all tests that are performed at or near a patient's uh, uh, place of care. So where care is provided is where this kind of tests are done. So all the tests that is done at the bedside of the patient is what, uh, 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 what adds up to what we term as point of care testing. So where care is provided, you know, with the purpose of removing all the uh, uh, known delays that can come with a, a, a laboratory investigation is what amounts to uh, uh, what we're looking at as point of care testing. Of course, we will agree that sometimes to do ordinary uh, HB or PCV can actually take hours. Sometimes it, the results come out the following day. And so we want to know what to do next. If only we have results of uh, this HB or PCV. And so point of care testing involves doing the test just right before the patient's there. And if we don't do it there, not too far away, so that the result can be deployed into an immediate decision uh, making uh, a protocol so, so that our treatment continues. So it can best be described as where, I mean, uh, POCT can be best described based on where it is performed. Of course, anything can surface, but not uh, taking the samples to a centralized lab, where, of course, maybe some automated machines, sophisticated machines and all of that will be used. Of course, if we, Look at the other uh, uh, system of uh, laboratory testing. It will involve taking samples from different wards, okay, labeling them and submitting them there. And then these tests are done one after the other before results are now brought back. Of course, a lot of time uh, must have uh, gone by. So we actually uh, pay attention to POCT, point of care testing, as in 
test that is done very proximate to the patient. It might not be done in the presence of that patient, as it were, maybe in the physician's uh, 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 office or anywhere, indeed, close to the patient. So the result can actually be deployed into immediate decision taking. So it may be done by the physician, by the pharmacist, by the nurses or scientists, even <clears throat> by the patient himself or his caregiver, if they're that informed. So what we're saying is that it doesn't have to uh, be the scientist as a kind of sacrosanct uh, person doing the test. Anyone can actually run this test so that we can now know what to do next. Otherwise, we want to wait for hours or if possible, the following day before we know what to do. And of course, that can be costly. It can be devastating. If we are going to wait till uh, hours before we do the next thing. So, uh, POCT can happen in an ambulance. If somebody has an accident and the person is in an ambulance, we can actually do a POCT test in that ambulance and know what next to do even there before the patient actually arrives at the, uh, uh, the emergency uh, ward. So it can be by the pharmacist, it can be by the physician or anybody at that. It can be a test done by an emergency first res responder by any healthcare provider, nurse ETC, and by patient uh, himself, if they are actually capable or able to, you know, you know, to, to run the test. So now let us um, uh, now down to pharmacy care. The purpose of looking at POCT this evening is to see how we can optimize pharmaceutical care. And so clinical pharmacists already have a goal to optimize this pharmaceutical care. We want to take it to the pinnacle, to the best uh, uh, level. And pharmaceutical care is the direct responsible uh, services of, uh, you know, involving medication related care to achieve definite and obvious outcomes to our patient's benefit. So POCT is obviously a veritable tool to achieve this goal with well articulated, well uh, designed and selected POCT uh, protocols, we can be on course and of course not out of uh, uh, order in uh, decisions we are taking with respect to uh, drug doses, uh, drug uh, dosages, uh, drug selection, and uh, whatever interventions we are out to, 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 to make. So POCT will help and timely too in identifying and preventing potential drug therapy problems. Once we run a POCT, we can now say, oh, no, 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 no. We are not following this course. Let us follow this other course. If we follow this course, there will be a problem. If we do this, if we do that, there will be a challenge. So POCT can actually help us to... To, to, to take a, a, a U-turn or to take decisions that will be to the advantage of our clients. And so POCT can also help us to resolve actual drug therapy problems. If a patient is on a course of a medication and then we run a POCT test and it, 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 it shows that, no, 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 we are not in the right course, then we can actually take a, a recourse immediately, instead of waiting the, uh, for the conventional labs to bring a, a, a results the following day, wasting resources, wasting time, uh, you know, increasing uh, hospital stay and, uh, and associated uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 lags as it were. So POCT is useful in evaluating our successes when we are you know, observing pharmacotherapy. So are we on course? Uh, are, are things going the way we want it? Serial uh, testings using POCT protocols can help us know that we are on course. Of course, I just give an illustration. If somebody is going to Lagos and you have get off uh, uh, the, 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 the right course while driving, 
it's good to always ask, is this, otherwise we will have veered away so many miles before we now start uh, retracing our steps. And so this happens a lot. We, 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 we use the wrong uh, approaches and all of that because we, uh, we, 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 we are not stopping you know, systematically to see what results we are having. And so let us talk about designs and uh, the devices involving point of care uh, testing. Point of care testings involve transportable, portable, handheld instruments, and oftentimes test kits, you know, to, to do some, uh, 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 to, to, to evaluate some parameters that are contingent to, uh, 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 to the goal, the, the, the plan, the, the, the goal that we have to achieve. For example, if we have uh, uh, a, a, a patient that is hyperglycemic and the, the blood sugar is HI, like uh, most uh, uh, glucometers we read, and if this person is on insulin, whatever type of insulin, after giving the first dose, it just be okay to use a glucometer to see what we have. It might have dropped to 300 milligram per DL. And uh, if we actually uh, started with 20 uh, uh, IU of insulin, we may want to advise the prescriber to step down a little on that dose so that we don't crash the, the blood sugar. So with uh, a glucometer, the common glucometer, which is also uh, qualified as a POCT device, we can use that to uh, monitor the, the successes we are having with the blood sugar reduction based on the plan that we have. And so without a blood sugar uh, instrument, as it were, we can't just continue to use uh, insulin and we cannot make any intervention that is meaningful. Uh, probably suggested to the physician, why don't you reduce the, 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 the dose? He doesn't see why we are reducing it because we are actually with, we've submitted a, a blood sample to the lab and uh, we hope to get the result by, by, by noon or, or by dusk. So with the blood sugar uh, machine, we can systematically and periodically, and uh, according to our plan, uh, monitor uh, the, the, the progress we have. And so POCT in different specialty areas of a clinical pharmacy practice will help us uh, make uh, contributions, interventions that uh, are undeniable. And so uh, talking about this at this time is very timely. And uh, I believe the challenge we now have is to ensure that all these POCTs can, uh, and, the, and the protocols can be maximized in different practice areas. So that what we are saying will not just be theoretical, it will, it, it will be evidence-based. We are making inter this intervention based on the last treaty. And we're about to take another one that will further corroborate the fact that, yes, we, 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 we need to uh, uh, maybe step up or step down the, the dosages of the drugs that we, we, we have. So uh, the design can be uh, in test kit uh, formats, like we just said, and sometimes it's enclosed in a plastic case. In fact, the kind of designs we have today makes uh, uh, the manufacturers receive uh, an applaud that they're actually working, they're appealing, they're, they're, they're fanciful, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're just, you know, the, the kind of store that we want to work with. So the activity profile of our POCT devices are mostly premised on physiological and biochemical markers that actually tells us of the, the, the event or the trend or the progress of, uh, of uh, the health challenge that we are handling. And so I know it takes some, uh, some biochemists, uh, which can include pharmacists who are into researches in this area to uh, help come up with uh, meaningful uh, 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 testing uh, devices that can help us in different areas of our practice. 
Uh, we move to the next slide, types and applications of POCT. We started an applications in immunology have actually produced a lot of uh, POCT devices or test kits. With the advent of COVID-19, uh, pharmacies have actually come to the limelight. And uh, I guess before that time, we were not actually that deep in, 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 in using POCT devices. I know that uh, we, we, we use a uh, blood sugar uh, uh, instrument, we use a uh, blood pressure instrument, uh, but with the advent of COVID-19, we cannot prick uh, people's uh, fingers with uh, some microliter of blood, do some more sophisticated tests, even at the level of community practice, or even in uh, uh, hospital practice and other areas. That, that makes our uh, relevance more, uh, you know, heightened, so to say. And so we search an application in different uh, specialty fields, ops and giant, uh, urology, cardiology, rheumatology, all the different areas where we specialize. Once we are able to, you know, uh, update ourselves with the skill or the protocols of, of, of using these POCTs, then we can actually have strong points to suggest that uh, uh, these are interventions are, are, are critical. And of course, like I know it, nobody will say no to what we're saying since it is uh, based on, uh, on uh, these testings. So general research and screenings uh, of, uh, for, for one uh, parameter or the other that uh, you know, de describes uh, the, the health of uh, the air condition of of our clients. Will will uh, you know? Will we, we'll make our interventions uh, worthwhile? So the next slide says POCTs and biomarkers. Uh, it will be important for us to note the, uh, the, the the significance of biomarkers in research as it relates to POCT. Research is ever increasing, trying to see what kind of uh, biomech, uh, bi biochemical uh, 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 stuffs or chemicals or macromolecules or anything like that that increases or decreases with uh, uh, the progress of, uh, uh, of treatments and all of that. So once we can identify those things, then a, uh, a, a, a POCT can be developed to help see or, 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 or monitor the progress of a, of, of a therapy. And once these are in place, then we can you know, uh, uh, you know, make more meaningful contributions. And so uh, POCT is very valuable in assessing the susceptibility and risk of, uh, 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 of a whatever, uh, a treatment plan that we have embarked on, whether it is a, it should be sustained or changed as it were, POCT can help us do diagnosis of a, a gray, a gray or you know, uh, confusing uh, uh, symptoms of a, of a client. Uh, because of course, there are some symptoms that will look like uh, this or that, requiring that we need to know exactly what it is before we uh, uh, take a, a leap. You know, like he says, we should look before we, we, we leap as it were. And uh, sometimes you cannot wait for the conventional and centralized labs to come up with results. So some of these uh, uh, POCT devices can actually help us know that this is the condition uh, 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 we have on ground. And so we can use POCTs to monitor even as a treatment progresses. And then we can also use it to note the, 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 the outcome, the prognosis of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the path that we have uh, chosen to, to tread. So they are also predictive. And as pharmacists, POCTs can be developed to monitor the pharmacodynamic uh, 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 outcomes of treatments. And so POCT 
should be the 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 the, the, in, the in thing, as it were, for us to make interventions, as it were. So safety of uh, a particular drug or or treatment uh, protocol can also be evaluated or assessed using POCT uh, devices. So there is the need to research and adapt to pharmaceutical care interventions using uh, POCTs in different specialties. So now that we have different specialties as, uh, as uh, we have in, in, in CPAN, uh, each specialty we now uh, you know, gather together different kind of uh, POCT uh, instrument or protocols that can help, you know, make our interventions uh, all the water. And because as it is, sometimes we talk to physicians, we're asking that doses should be reduced or increased or that a drug should be dropped because the, the, uh, uh, it looks like a, there's a duplication and all of that. And this uh, physician is saying, no, 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 that's how I do it. I, I, I've been doing it for, uh, but with the POCT, with the test, with the, the outcome, almost immediately, he will want to change uh, or, or uh, make a rethink, as uh, I, I believe. Then at this point, I'd like us to look at the future research advances in uh, uh, concerning POCTs and clinical pharmacy practice, just with the goal of optimizing our, uh, uh, our, our services to our clients. There are ongoing researches at identifying biomarkers and additional tests for biomarkers. This is a research that is uh, probably beyond uh, developing countries, uh, but it's not as if they are impossible here too. We can actually uh, develop biomarkers for our use as it relates to uh, uh, drugs. Uh, our patient takes the first dose, takes the second dose, and if possible, the third. So having taken three doses of a, of, of, of a drug, there should be something we have developed to see how uh, maybe fever is uh, dropping or uh, blood level is uh, uh, improving and all of that. It takes our uh, academic uh, efforts or researches to look into these areas. We have some tertiary institutions or research uh, 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 institutions in Africa. Let me say even in Nigeria. And I believe that if they look in this direction, some uh, good things can actually come out from from uh, Jerusalem, we can actually come up with result, uh, research findings that helps us, uh, you know, emphasize or look at things from even the drug uh, uh, aspect. Most of the POCTs might not be emphasizing the use of uh, of drugs, as it were. It might just be uh, talking about uh, uh, the person's uh, wellness, but we might want to develop. POCTs that will uh, want to talk about the need to reduce doses of drugs or to increase it, even as this person is getting uh, well. Like the example I gave earlier, if blood sugar is dropping, oh, that's welcome. That's a good uh, 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 development. Uh, but as it is, we will need to reduce uh, the, 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 the doses. And it is the blood sugar uh, instrument that we have used that has helped us to come about that. And so we can build on what is available by looking at different drugs, how the drugs interact with receptors, even as pharmacists, so that we can actually take uh, charge of our domain. Most of these ones that we have here, as it were, are used by uh, everyone. But I'm also thinking that there might be some uh, POCTs that are developed by pharmacists, and uh, of course, maybe almost exclusively uh, pharmacists uh, 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 saying, even though like we said earlier, anybody can use them, but we can actually develop some that we say yes is our, our product, our trademark, our patents, 
developed by pharmacists. And uh, I think uh, we, we, we can actually do that. So biomarkers are uh, uh, identified biomarkers for different uh, medical conditions. We can actually identify biomarkers for uh, effect of drugs on biological systems. And, uh, you know, somehow I think uh, it, it can be a, a research uh, a, a direction. So designing POCTs to measure sophisticated clinical endpoints can be another uh, 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 research uh, direction in the, in, in the next uh, 10 years or, or more. And so future research advances back to our preamble. We have said that day in, day out, we will need to develop, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, analytical or, or, you know, monitoring uh, protocols to see whether we are on course with respect to uh, pharmacotherapy, with respect to the plan we have for, for our, our, our patients. So exploring the world of biomarkers as clinical pharmacy research is a, a, a welcome development. So there are quite a number of um, POCT that I'd like to talk about before we close this evening, uh, because I'm, I know we have just 30 minutes for this talk. Uh, we have the C-reactive proteins, CRP. This is a dynamic biomarker that can help us uh, make uh, physicians or prescribers to, you know, the, already we have enough of antibiotic uh, misuse and uh, over prescribing and uh, and we talk about antibiotic stewardship the the, the truth is antibiotics are over and uh, the, 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 there's a kind of craze as it were with the way antibiotics are used and so crp uh is a a a, a, a biomarker that can help us see that uh, we don't, uh, or we, we can reduce or, or, or withdraw or, or stop uh, the use of uh, antibiotics at a particular point. And so uh, exploring more into how the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the protocols of uh, use of CRP is not a, a, a bad idea. And um, we have a POCTs that uh, look at a, a troponin, that's what the POCTTN. This is designed to measure troponin levels in, a, in, cardio, in, in cardiology. So troponins are, are, are used to assess coronary syndrome. Uh, it, it can be used to see the progress of a, of a, a treatment in, in a CHD, in a CVD. So, so, uh, instead of using a, a uh, uh, a draw continuously till uh, God knows when. We can actually have uh, devices that we can use to, uh, you know, to monitor the progress of, of, of our treatment. And then that can form the basis of our intervention, as it were. So glyphabillary acidic proteins and S100 calcium binding proteins are also of uh, value in neurology. So these ones look at the, 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 the brain, uh, the uh, uh, neurotransmitters, based on the drugs that we have just introduced. Some drugs are actually uh, anticholinergic, some are adrenergic and all of that. We keep using this drug, we draw this, increase the dose of this based on uh, what we see, as it were, uh, the way the patient is responding. Uh, but we can actually use POCT devices that are more uh, 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 qualitative, as it were, in terms of uh, 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 assessing the progress we are making. Instead of a blind uh, 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 assumptions and all of that, or sending uh, uh, samples to labs while the doses continue, when we ought to have even discontinued those immediately, if there is a test that can tell us uh, to do so, uh, you know, uh, you know, so uh, there is the necessity for clinical pharmacists to embrace the technology. It is imperative for us to start collaborating and 
putting uh, stuff together to develop more uh, testing devices that can help us in the different specialty fields. So the use of the result for clinical decisions uh, at, 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 uh, before the next dose is taken is a, quite a, a, a useful uh, a, a move. So, so this suffices to say that all the stakeholders in the healthcare uh, uh, delivery system can actually agree together because of this test that we've done. Nobody is saying no, or nobody is thinking that uh, 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 advice is not useful. And because every advice, every decision is premised on something that is giving us the, the direction. Of course, nobody argues with the compass that this is the north direction, this is the south, this is the east, this is the west. So if we have uh, respect for compasses, then we should have respect for POCTs. And then if we use it to form the basis for our contributions, then it makes a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of sense to ensure that there are enough and array of POCT devices to, uh, to use for a different uh, uh, practice areas. Of course, I know that it may mean that we are taking our eyes away from the central labs. No, the central labs are still going to have their own uh, uh, relevance because POCT devices are majorly uh, qualitative. Most times, they are not uh, the, the, the quantitative uh, uh, usefulness is not as high as the kind of uh, devices or instruments you know, that we have in, in a centralized labs. Uh, but before the result from that end comes, there is something that we need to use to, uh, uh, to make progress. So it's not as if we are saying the med lab scientists are not useful anymore, no. But across the globe, the trend is that tests should be closer to, uh, to the patients and not further away. And that reminds me of a, a claim that we just attended to two weeks ago. This fellow has ascites, uh, also has a, uh, hyperglycemia, also has anemia. And so we had to order for uh, HB tests periodically we had uh, a fine test, uh, a blood uh, glucose machine with the strips steadily. And then there was the doctor, uh, a nurse, a, 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 and I as the uh, clinical pharmacist in that team in equal dependent here. So I know that this kind of practice can actually happen. And then we have uh, a POCT device, which is a, a, a blood uh, a sugar machine. And of course, there's a lab very close to us that we just prick uh, uh, the finger, use capillary tube, collect a blood sample, and then uh, with, a, uh, with the hematocrite centrifuge, uh, we, we see what the blood sugar is till a, 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 a transfusion of a two pints was ordered by a physician. And then the, 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 the person is bouncing now. And so if we keep, uh, uh, treating this person, trying to bring down the blood sugar, uh, trying to uh, bring up the 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 the, uh, the uh, anemia. I because this fellow was a, wow. about a seven gram uh, 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 per deal, and then the ascites also resolved. Sincerely, I think practice in a collaborative form. Is quite very interesting, and using POCT devices to, you know, uh, systematically follow up on what we are, uh, are seeing or achieving. Whether we we need to up our game or step down, it, it, it makes a lot of sense as it were. So, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to overflow the uh, the topic as it were. It is quite clear and certain that with the use of uh, uh, a POCT devices in uh, our practice as clinical pharmacists, we will be in focus and not out of focus. And uh, if we have uh, devices that is well acceptable to everyone as a, 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 a first uh, 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 res uh, result to see whether we are 
in, in line or not, then we, we, we agree. And then we can, uh, you know, speak uh, less of a uh, 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 grammars and uh, it doesn't look like somebody wants to show their relevance, but there is something that is directing all of us to what we are doing. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for uh, your uh, audience. I'd like to take questions or whatever. Let me hand over to the uh, moderator right now. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much, Dr. Sunday Awof Kisayo for your presentation. That has been a, a good one. Uh, I'd like to, before we take uh, question and answer and the comments, contributions, comment, question and answer, we are going to take that now. But before then, uh, the National Sipan Chairman will give his remarks. After his remarks, we then take the comments and question and answer. I would like to, before the National Chairman take his remarks, I would like to recognize the presence of all our military colleagues that are here. The numbers are quite impressive. Uh, I appreciate you all for participating in this uh, presentation. I also like to recognize my state chairman, PSN chairman of Cross River State. He's here pre uh, president with us, Thomas uh, Kenneth Eden. Now, oh, welcome. Uh, I would like to call on the national chairman, Dr. Joseph Madu, to take remarks. Then we, after that, we go to question and answer and contributions. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Give good evening, Mr. Moderator. Please, can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Good evening. All right. We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Okay. Let me start by you. thanking. Yes. Let me start by thanking all the participants at this meeting. Like we usually say, if there are no participants, everything that is being done will be in vain. To whom will the presenter make his presentation? So I want to thank all the participants because it is the participants that helped us to form a quorum before we can even do something. And then please permit me to still recognize a few persons. I saw pharmacist Akin Tayo, even though I cannot see his uh, surname, but I believe he's Olumide Akin Tayo, our Jagaban of pharmacy, our field marshal himself, I, all the way from Lagos State. I believe he's joining us this night. And being an elder, we thank him so much for being part of this meeting tonight. And let me still reiterate the fact that I can see a lot of uh, uh, officers, military officers in this meeting, flight leaders, squadron leaders, and the rest of them. And let me particularly recognize squadron leader Duke Daniels. I saw him on the this thing. He was my I think after my set, he was PANS president in Abu's area. And so I have to specially recognize him. And then let me thank our presenter this night, Professor Awofi Sayo. We thank you very much, sir, for coming. And I believe we have added to our bank of knowledge tonight. We have learned one thing tonight. The point of care tests are those tests that we do beside the patient, or even if he's not close to the patient, the patient should not be too much far away. And as such tests are also quick tests. While we wait for conventional laboratory tests, we can use our point of care tests to rule in or to rule out, as the case may be, in certain disease conditions. And he's even advocating that we develop more that we can use to monitor drug therapy. Of course, we all know that the Pharmacy Council of 2022 recognizes pharmaceutical care and collaborative drug therapy monitoring. And so this is not a period whereby somebody will say, am I qualified to run tests? If pharmaceutical care is recognized, 
that we should offer it in our settings, then you can always do some of these quick tests to rule in or rule out certain conditions or drug therapy problem. I think that is uh, where I would like to stop at this point while appreciating the moderator and everyone. Thank you very much for making Sipan clinical meeting this night a success. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir, Mr. Chairman, for always being with us, encouraging us. You are a source of strength and motivation to all CIPAM uh, members and indeed all pharmacists in the, in the country. Uh, thank you for the remarks. Uh, after the comments, question and answer, the, the secretary, I'm not sure the, the, the secretary of education committee is here. The secretary of CIPAM, national CIPAM secretary will give a, a vote of thanks then somebody i'll call i'll also i'll call on them um, maybe after that i'll call somebody to take the uh, closing prayer so we are now on to question and answer if you have any question this is the time for you to ask if you have any comments to make on the presentation this is the time for you to do so thank you Can you all hear me, please? Yes, we are on an answer section. Hello, good evening. You can, you can also put your question and answer on the chat box. Because it's very many. Good evening, pharmacies to whom. Good evening, you can go ahead. Let me unmute and go ahead. Please unmute and, and go ahead. Okay. Um, my question goes like this. Um, for those of us in the, in the community pharmacy, can we also practice this um, point of care testing? And will it not be considered as um, going above board in terms of um, our practice restrictions? Thank you. Okay, the presenter, uh, over to you. Whether those in the community practice can also uh, carry out point, point of, of care test. Presenter, you could please unmute yourself and attend to the question. It's all right, sir. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, I want to say already that POCT test, a POC a point of uh, care test is already uh, embraced by many community pharmacies. For example, years back, is on head of that a blood pressure is taken in a, in a pharmacy. Taking blood pressure of your clients in a community pharmacy is already a POCT. And uh, many uh, community pharmacies are offering uh, services such as a uh, blood sugar testing, cholesterol, uh, blood cholesterol testing. And uh, while a patient has made complaints of this or that, maybe uh, numbness on the leg and not the uh, dizziness, this and that and that, the, the, the pharmacist at the community practice might want to ask uh, uh, to find out if cholesterol levels are high or whether uh, sugar levels are high and all of that. So uh, testing this uh, client right in his presence there, and documenting such stuff is already a POCT. So as it is, uh, we may be thinking, is one more elaborate or, or sophisticated thing? No, it's already with us. POCT is already with us. It's just for us to welcome it officially and uh, 
and put our GIA system, GIA 2, GIA 3, GIA 4, so that we can actually optimize our care. So if you are still at this point thinking, oh, I can't do blood sugar tests in my pharmacy, I can't uh, check a cholesterol, somebody will come and uh, make issues, I don't believe so. And the, 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 the reality will soon dawn on us faster than we think. I guess that's going to be my answer to that question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, um, uh, pharmacist uh, Bako Ali, could you please take your question or your comment? Unmute thank yourself you. and take the question or comment. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator and the present. My comment is just, uh, an, is just information on the last question on POC in the uh, Community pharmacy. pharmacy. As as Riley said, as you Riley said, it's already taking place. And I want you know our national conference is coming up next week in Nasaba. And there is a training, a certification training on POCT that is going to take place in Nasaba. It's been all over ICTM platform. So in fact, there are about 124 POCT that community pharmacies can do in their respective pharmacy. From PSA to hepatitis to HIV to and also, I think some of our colleagues, both uh, ACPM member and non-ACPM member, are invited for that training in uh, Asaba. It's coming up on 31st mm -hmm. and 2nd of uh, uh, August. We are invited experts in the field of uh, POCT will be taking us through. Thank you very much. So POCT is already with us. All right, thank you very much, uh, Pharmacist Ali. Uh, any other question? Yeah, hello, good evening. Uh, Good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, sir. Okay, good evening. This is the pharmacist in Dukwe Uma. Hello. Hello, sir. We can hear you, sir. Okay, Nduku Uma speaking. Um, it's just to make a further contribution and to encourage the first uh, questioner. But perhaps an area of concern he may his question may also be relating to is the aspect of regulatory checks by the laboratory council inspectorate unit and i'm sure a few of us across the country may have had incidences where colleagues particularly in retail practice you know were uh, confronted or they have their premises uh, under siege of seizure and uh, of closure and what have you what colleagues need to understand, those of us in community practice, is that in applying POCT in practical terms, it's something you do within the confines of your premises without advertising it in any form beyond the boundaries of your practice. But when some go out of the way to place banners, place billboards in front or by roadside, advertising those services, then we are going beyond the law. Ours is for qualitative assessment of our client based on our one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. And these are things we are just doing on that spot to aid them. But if we now bring a commercial aspect to it, then we are venturing into the field of the other professionals. So I think that's just a safety valve I feel we should understand so that we'll be much more encouraged to get involved in much expanded form. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the, the contribution. Uh, thank you very much for that contribution. Uh, please, the key word there is uh, point of care testing. And uh, if, just as the presenter said, if a patient can also participate in point of care testing or self test, then why not pharmacist? Like check of, checking of BP and all that glucose level and the rest of them. The 
patient himself can test, can take his BP, can check his uh, glucose level. So if a patient who may be uh, who may not be a clinical uh, personnel or a head personnel can do that. Why not a pharmacist that is a head personnel or a clinician? Thank you very much. Any other question or contribution? Hello, uh, Mr. Modrito. Hello? Yes, can go ahead. Yes, I'd like to make a point here, knowing fully well that this is a very large uh, assembly of uh, eminent persons, personalities in pharmacy practice. Yes, I subscribe to that idea that one should not put a banner in front of a uh, community pharmacy advertising uh, the catalog of uh, 145 uh, POCT tests available in a pharmacy. It, it, it doesn't call for that, as it were. It, it, it makes it look like a, 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 we are, we're, 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 we're traders, we're, no. As, as our clients come in and their, their, their issues relate to one thing or the other, that we want to get uh, clarifications, uh, light, more light into, we can actually use those are uh, 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 POCT that can give us direction and then we document it as for our clients. The other point I want to make now, and uh, I think we should look at maybe even now and later, is that we need some, some, uh, 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 some uh, protection as it were. If we have not advertised that we do this test, we do that test and as if we are doing commercial stuff, and we have uh, stuffs in our premises. I can't imagine having a blood sugar. Uh, 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 machine in my and a uh, uh, council for lab uh, and uh, my here's about this and they're not making it be, 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 be protected. Sometimes uh, these lab persons finish the test and then they, they, they open a drawer and remove drugs and give to, nobody's talking about that. So if we must move on, if we must get, take our games to the next level, then we need some level of protection provided that not put a banner or whatever outside there, advertising as if I'm a, 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 a centralized lab that we are trying, that, that uh, this concept is, uh, 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 the emphasizing. So I don't see how uh, a, 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 a medical uh, council will come to a pharmacy, move this and, and see that and see this, and, and our council is not saying anything about it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, pre Mr. Presenter. Uh, I, I would like to recognize the presence of the National Vice Chairman, Dr. Maureen Wafu. Your hand is up. You can make your comment or ask your question now. Thank you very much. I hope I'm audible. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, We can hear you, ma. Okay. Thank you very much. I want you to appreciate our erudite uh, teacher this evening. I'm not surprised. You gave us the, the um, physical skills during our just concluded a CIPA National Conference. And here you are teaching us. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is, as hospital for my patient care, through this point of care uh, testing, be in the hospital setting, how are we going to better as clinical pharmacists? Thank you. Hello, Samuel. I got the question, yes, I do. I got the question, yes. Do I go ahead and answer that? Yes, I can go ahead, sir. It's okay. Uh, I'd like us to also note the, the environment where we, we practice. We don't want to get involved in some, in some brow that are unhealthy. 
pharmacists are noble persons. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are you know, dignified uh, personalities. And so in hospital settings, since we have all of these uh, different healthcare providers, we will allow different persons to do their stops. But we also need to let them know that what is happening in, in, in uh, best practices in developed world, in Canada, in America, in India, in other places like that, is that the concept of this POCT is already on, the, on, on, on a very high pedestal. It does not say no to centralized laboratory. We believe that centralized laboratories give more accurate, more specific uh, outcomes. Uh, but the fact is that uh, the time lag, the delay, the, my, my, my want to make us lose uh, one or two uh, clients before the test comes out. If somebody has malaria or whatever, for instance, and then we're going to go and do my, uh, 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 microbiological uh, uh, whatever and all of that, it takes some protocol. It does. We could use the rapid diagnostic test uh, kit that shows uh, one or two lines while we're waiting for uh, whether it is in form uh, of malaria or whether it's uh, whatever from that end. So it's just that our system here does not like to appreciate things. They want to fight and, and they do territorial uh, protection and all of that. Uh, but the truth is, I'm sure the physician, the lab scientists, everyone, they're already aware that this POCT stuff is already on the, and sincerely, if lab scientists are not too careful, uh, it, it will take a chunk of their, of their relevance. Nobody goes to the lab now to go and check whether he or she's pregnant. People get a, um, a urine test and uh, does it. When you now want some more confirmatory stuff, you may not go to the lab and, and give a blood samples and they look for HCG. Okay. Thank you, sir. In, and so all these things are going in the next 10 years. Uh, it, 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 it's done on uh, many, on everyone that this has come to stay. Thank you. Hello. I think we, we are going to take the last question or the last comment from the national chair, national chairman, Dr. Joseph Madu. After that, then the national secretary will take the vote of thanks. Then we will uh, close in prayer. Thank you. Hello. Hello, can science. You can go ahead. All right. Can Thank you very much. Sorry, I just have to come in. Yes. Sorry, I just have to come in again. Based on the discussions, um, I want us to understand one thing. We have professionals. And then I also want us to understand that point of access probably mentioned by the president are not confirmatory tests. In fact, sometimes they are called rapid diagnostic tests. They are not confirmatory tests. Confirmatory tests are laboratory tests, which are done by laboratory scientists. Laboratory scientists. So we should know this. And I think that is where the person who advise that we must not put in board or sign post advertising it is correct. As the presenter, if the test you do close to your patient, these are not metric uh, tests. And these are allowed almost all over the world correctly. And lab scientists are aware of this. Except an ignorant lab scientist. Any scientist that is in tune with the current update know that there are these four points of care tests. And this can be done by any healthcare professional, including even the patient sometimes. In pregnancy tests, and people do with pregnancy tests, there are points of care tests. So there is no lab scientist that will come and get an noise with you that you are running a uh, point of death. And again, we were fighting for years. We want federal government to establish pharmacy law. I don't know if some people said what is in that pharmacy law. In that pharmacy law, 
I mentioned it earlier when I was collaborating therapy monitoring, pharmaceutical, and a few other things. That is of I already have a law. If you have your protocol or of how you do pharmaceutical care in your hospital, for instance, no one is annoyed with you for doing part of care tests, even in the hospital. Okay, the hospital has its own policy. I'm aware that in your hospital, even a new canon and I feel like what you So definitely, if Management does not allow success, then it cannot go. But no lab scientists will come and say that you are taking back your job. When you are doing points of practice, so to do your work, not to advertise or to do it for some kind of thing. No, for your work. Pharmacy practice. Let me start by saying this. I want someone. A pharmacist had the issue of the states. I think it's in one of the northern states. And a pharmacist was arrested for running tests in his pharmacy. He was claiming that it was point of care tests. And at that particular time, I also contacted the National Council of Laboratory Scientists. And I spoke to them at that particular time. This should be one or two years ago. And the lab scientists was not even in support of everybody having a pharmacy and stopping a pharmacy from a pharmacist. But we let a lot that young people brought it on the post that is doing such laboratory tests. And that gave them the letter is family. Using it for your professional work will not attract people because they understand that they are aware that people are it's like sugar test, even the patient running it for themselves, the client. People buy test strip and do it. So nobody will say why it. I don't know if I can clarify this. Thank you. Hello, thank you, sir. Thank you for the contribution, sir. Uh, I, I want to call on uh, the National Secretary to give the vote of thanks. It is not there. The Vice National Chairman, Dr. Maureen Wafu, could take the vote of thanks. After that, Pharmacist uh, Fusat Bello would take the closing prayer. National Vice Chairman, sir, uh, Ma. Ma, could you please take the vote of thanks? Yeah, thank you once again. Uh, on behalf of our national chairman, Dr. Joseph Kuman, I want to appreciate our dear for what you are doing for us to the participants in tonight's uh, clinical meeting. We wish up to eight participants and approved. Beautiful. I want to appreciate all of us. Our dear moderator, thank you very much. I will pray that all of us will have a good sleep this night and we promise to put what we learn into action in optimizing our patient care. Thank you very much and remember Thank you very much, ma. Uh, it's pharmacist Faswat Bello. If you are there, you can take the closing prayer. Otherwise, from Hakin or Lalekan, you could please take the closing prayer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, uh, good evening sir. It's a great pleasure to be here. All praise you, all praise you to Almighty Allah. That's very possible for us. We gathered here to have a, a very enlightening um, presentation by, by by the lecturer. We pray that all that we've learned will be put to practice. We pray that our profession will move forward and things will go right for us in our profession. We pray that 
very soon the uh, the consultancy cadre will be put uh, will be re will be regularized and we we'll start using it, particularly for those that are uh, working in the hospitals. Amen. Let's Amen. recite so I can here, for those that can recite it. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmideen, Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka na'sa'in, Iyidina sirat al-Mustaqim, sirat al-Ladina aliyam ta'alayhim, Bairu maktubi alayhim wa ladali. Thank you and good night. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you colleagues for effective participation. Good night everyone.